Greetings, all! Today, we'll be examining the uncommon ghost-type Pokémon Dusko, the Requiem Pokémon, its relatively rare evolution Dusclops, the Beckon Pokémon, and its exceptionally rare final evolution Dust Noir, the Gripper Pokémon. Frightening in form, with more than enough power to send shivers down the spines of anyone that dares to challenge them, the members of the Dusko family are powerful specters that can more than make a name for themselves against those that can't break through their defenses. Duskull have a black, semi-wispy form with a single pair of digitless limbs they often keep crossed behind their back, the bodies being covered with a cloak of sorts and a white crossbone marking on their back. Their front is covered by a skull-like bony mask, which also hides a red energy collection nodule that gives off the appearance of a red glowing eye. The evolved form, Dusclops, have a large grey body with the visual texture of a linen-wrapped body, with a series of grey strips on their body that hang loosely in the air to add to this visual texture, as well as a single large red eye of sorts with a white sclera around it. They walk along on two toeless flat bottom feet, and they are able to interact with their surroundings with a pair of five-fingered hands on their front. The Evolution Dust Noir have large black bodies with black wrist guards and gold trim markings around their arms and belly, with a stomach pattern like a mouth and eyes, and are once again legless, floating a bit off of the ground at all times. Their head space is changed form drastically into a multi-segment crest that lines the side of their head, with a large chimney-like head structure possessing a single gold ring around it and a yellow signal receiver on the top of their head. As with most ghost-type Pokémon, the members of the Dusko family, Duskull especially, are primarily nocturnal creatures and absolutely hate sunlight, preferring to hide under the veil of darkness at all times. Similarly to how Shuppet feed off of negative emotions for sustenance, these creatures must rely on the spiritual energy of a specific emotional state to survive. In their case, however, that emotional state is fear. If a Duskull spots a lost traveler or some other creature that looks easy to scare, it will turn invisible and silently sneak up behind its prey before appearing and waiting for the prey to turn around. At that point, Duskull will immediately begin scaring and chasing their prey as long as possible, absorbing the fear they radiate until the sun comes up. This is aided by the fact that they have access to levitate as their only base ability, but when Duskull evolve, they will lose their levitate ability and obtain in exchange the ability to induce absolute terror in others simply by staring at them through their pressure ability. Though individuals at all stages that are able to use a sleight of hand to examine others can also have Frisk as a hidden ability, which all of this comes a direct consequence of their diet of fear before evolution. In that form, Dust Clubs are extremely powerful defensive fighters that can utilize a surprising variety of attacks due to the addition of sturdy hounds on their torso, including the Shadow Punch attack, which is gained immediately upon evolving, and the Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch attacks, as well as the Bind and Gravity moves. However, their offensive abilities are still fairly limited, and a lack of any improvement in mobility and evolution can make any offensive assault difficult for them to pull off. This changes once they evolve into Dusk Noir, however, as Dusk Noir are notably faster, possess considerably greater offensive strength, particularly in regards to physical attacks, and have slightly better defenses. They are also far more intelligent, and are often ranked among the most intelligent non psychic type Pokémon known to mankind, even exceeding the capabilities of Pokémon like Slowking in some cases though given that they tend to obey orders given to them by forces outside the physical world, whether they themselves are the sentient source of their intelligence is unknown. In terms of stats, this translates into these spectral creatures not having a great deal of special offense to share, nor much in the way of speed or stamina, their base HP, special attack, and speed stats being below average for a fully evolved ghost-type Pokémon, but they can hit surprisingly hard with physical attacks and are potent tanks, having above average base attack, defense, and special defense stats, and all around existing as one of the most powerful ghost-type Pokémon known to exist. While Duskull are frightening enough for their small size to most, their need to feed on fear is immensely helped by the presence of an energy-collecting nodule in the front of their bodies. Many people in Pokémon mistake this glowing red nodule for an eye, but the fact that Duskull actually have no eye sockets and can move the nodule freely back and forth should be an obvious clue to the truth. This in turn means that Duskull are technically blind. They can only see the surroundings through advanced heat-sensing organs, which are protected by a thick plate of bone that gives them the illusion of a face. Although intended to be functional, the overall image makes Duskull a frightening creature that even adult men have been known to freeze upon seeing their eye, in turn making Duskull jobs much easier, which also partially explains why Duskull masks are exceptionally popular with children around Halloween. Interestingly enough though, 
Duskull are actually fairly playful creatures and will gladly play with all sorts of Pokemon when they aren't too busy scaring them. For trainers, this makes Duskull relatively easy ghost types to start off with and train early on, even though they are better at defense than offense. However, it is also noted that Duskull absolutely hate disobedience and tend to go out of the way just to teach impudent individuals a lesson. According to old Hoenn folklore, Duskull will actually come to the rooms of disobedient children and spirit them away if they refuse to do what they are told. While it might seem unlikely at first, Duskull do have the ability to pass through walls and there actually have been a few dozen accounts of children disappearing suddenly and without warning over the past few centuries in the region, oftentimes being last seen in the presence of a Duskull in an intense state of fear. This would also make sense in light of the species' need to feed on fear for survival, though it is still unusual that they would go out of their way just to punish a rotten child. It is quite possible, however, that Dusko may be reflecting the same code of justice that would be established by the evolutions. If so, that would make Dusko family one of the few cases where moralistic ideals are transferred to offspring without manual teaching or genetics playing a key role. Although Dusko can simply scare others to get what they need to survive, in order to bring opponents closer to them to feed on fear and the life force as a whole, Dusk Clubs choose to engage in a bizarre ritual in which they force the opponent to pay attention to them by waving their hands around in a somewhat macabre manner, distracting the opposition before finally staring directly at them with their eye. Their single eye is in fact the same energy collecting nodule that they possessed as Duskull, but because Dusk Clubs no longer need to feed on fear in order to survive, it has been converted into a beacon for focusing psychic energy. In addition to allowing Dusk Clubs to see and distinguish creatures and objects by the psychic energy they emit, this beacon allows Dusk Clubs to focus their mind directly into the mind of another, in turn making them their slave. As such, when the opposition stares directly at a Dusk Clubs during this ritual, they effectively become a puppet and are under the complete control of the Dusk Clubs, making most battles an easy win. What truly makes Dusk Clubs unique and absolutely bizarre, however, is the fact that their bodies are almost completely hollow and effectively act like black holes. Whatever goes in them, never comes out. Although Dusk Clubs resonate fairly little psychic energy from their bodies and thus would seem rather benign all around, the energy fields within their bodies are exceptionally chaotic and are so destructive that even the most durable test probes only last a few moments within them before being destroyed. Dusk Clubs generally do not take things into their bodies on a regular basis, but the fact that they can absorb literally anything if they suck it in with their open maw, even something as massive as a jumbo jet, has made them a highly feared creature among even ghost-type specialists. For the longest time, there was no real explanation as to why or how this was even possible. It was only recently that it was discovered that Dust Clubs actually are black holes. In a sense. Hoenn folklore states that the only thing that exists within a Dust Clubs is a spectral ball of fire, which was once believed to be nothing more than a myth. As it turns out, however, there is a kind of spectral fire within Dust Clubs. It just happens to be the heart of an immense gravity well. It appears that the internalization of massive amounts of fear in combination with their bizarre metaphysical composition generates a considerable amount of torsion within the fabric of space-time contained within their bodies, twisting it into a unique type of black hole only seen in Dust Clubs and their evolved form, Dust Noir. Unfortunately, this is only an educated guess and not proven fact, as it is currently impossible to keep any instrument working within a Dust Clubs for more than a fraction of a second. The fact that nothing ever leaves their body, and their ability to utilize the gravity technique, however, would seem to make it the only logical explanation. Interestingly enough, Dust Clubs can often be seen absorbing Will-O-Wisps in Dark Forest at night, though it is unclear why. It could be said, however, that they are practicing for the duties they will take up when they eventually evolve into Dust Noir. In terms of factual information, there isn't a great deal that can be said for certain about Dust Noir, primarily due to their exceptional rarity in the wild. This is also in due part because they can only evolve from Dust Clubs after being exposed to massive concentrations of spiritual energy, a process that can usually be initiated by training them while they are holding a Reaper Cloth. As with Dust Clubs, Dust Noir possess a single eye, which is actually a focusing beacon for psychic energy that allows them to see and distinguish objects and life forms from one another by the psychic energy they radiate. Most importantly, however, Dust Noir still apparently contain a gravity well of some sort inside of them and cannot release anything that has entered their body. In stark contrast to Dust Clubs, however, Dust Noir can actually open up their midsections or stomachs to directly absorb or draw on objects and creatures manually. It is currently unknown how they are able to control the immense forces generated by the black hole inside of them, as would be expected to rip them apart and absorb them into their own insides when even the slightest opening is created. 
In addition, Dust Noir can use the open midsection to focus and launch projectile attacks like Hex, as well as a Destiny Bond technique they learn in time, though this is usually only done in extremely desperate situations. While there is almost nothing concrete that can be said about Dust Noir in terms of behavior, many metaphysicists believe that Dust Noir are in fact the true guardians of the spirit world. Although the antenna on the heads of Dust Noir is not designed to give out radio signals, but to receive them, the signals that they appear to receive are so faint that their source and actual meaning is impossible to determine with current technology. According to metaphysicists, however, these signals are actually signals from the spirit world that are meant to help Dust Noir in their sole job, namely, finding lost spirits, otherwise taking the spirits of others and disgorging their useless bodies back out of their forms after extraction. As the few eyewitness reports available seem to indicate, whenever Dust Noir find lost spirits, or ones that have otherwise escaped the spirit world, they gather them up into their open stomach. It is believed that Dust Noir thus act as living storage devices and literally carry spirits with them between this world and the spirit world. If this is true in any sense, it would make Dust Noir one of the most important ghost-type Pokémon known in terms of function. While it is duly noted that none of this information has been scientifically proven and is considered to be speculative at best by many, there unfortunately are no other explanations existing at this time that can explain these accounts. In the context of real-world situations, this otherwise preposterous hypothesis explains the vast majority of their observed behavior, including their penchant for disappearing for long periods of time without leaving any sort of trail. If Dust Noir truly are guardians of the spirit world and are designed to gather lost spirits and take them where they belong, it is likely that all the mysteries of the metaphysical world lie somewhere among their daily duties. Whether or not that proves to be the case in the future, however, is anybody's guess. While they might not always be the most powerful offensive fighters in the spirit world, the members of the Dusko family are spooky entities that can more than make their existence a fright to those unprepared for their unique powers and attacks. You might have to go out of your way to get them to a fully powered state, but the reward is more than worth it once they are brought to the highest tier of their evolution. Just do yourself a favor and make sure that, if you get close to these creatures, you are ready to get back as far as possible if you disturb them. Otherwise, you may be in for a horrible fate if they decide to take you inside of them into a ghastly world that no living creature is ever meant to see before their time is up. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always a pleasure to help teach others about the world of Pokemon and the many facets of it that exist in both the world we call home and the world they call home. If you'd like, please leave a comment and subscribe and ring the bell to this channel to get regular updates on content and anything else that might be going on. You can find me and my written work on DeviantArt under the name Utitis and be informed of information and content uploads on my Twitter page and my Patreon page. Donations are always welcome. Always remember, the world of Pokemon is a vast and varied place, and there's no telling what secrets might be hiding just around the corner. So keep watch, stay vigilant, and always prepare for the unexpected. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of the day.